Moscow, the Moscow's mayor, Yuri Lushkov, has topped Forbes magazine's list of Russian officials with the highest annual household income. And that's thanks to his wife. She earned more than a billion dollars last year. Members of Russia's ruling party, United Russia, occupy most of the places in Forbes list. And uh, here's our correspondent, Ivor Bennett. He's not on the list, but he knows more about it. Hello, Ivor. Um, does this make the mayor's wife the most powerful woman in the country? Well, yes, it does, according to this list. It's the Forbes list of power and money. It looks at total family income. And Elena Baturina, uh, Yuri Lushkov's wife, last year earned 31 billion rubles, so just over a million dollars. And that was actually more than the rest of these people on this list put together. And that's 99 other people. The total income for this list was 56 billion rubles. So she trumped that, uh, the rest of it, quite considerably. And Yuri Lushkov, the Moscow mayor, on his own, his uh, salary was actually pitiful in comparison, just 8 million rubles. And so it's purely because of his wife that he actually tops this list. But nevertheless, he is top of it. But according to the editor of Forbes.ru, the website that actually compiled this list of power and money, it could just be a one-off. I think Baturina's case is a one-off. Yes, she earned a billion dollars. But that was 2009, during the crisis. She sold some shares and most of the profit was used to pay off the company's debts. So this list looked at the total family income, so spouses' income as well, of state and federal officials. And as you said, what it found was that most people actually on this list, 60%, were actually members of the United Russia ruling party. And other characteristics and other traits of this list show that the most popular car to drive amongst the rich and powerful is a Mercedes-Benz. popular model is S500. And the best place to work, according to this list, is uh, Russia's parliament. And the 29 people on this list work in the state Duma, 19 uh, in the federal council. So actually almost half of the rich and, f rich and powerful work in Russia's parliament. I love how you just almost said rich and famous. Well, they might be after this program. Um, Ivor, if we talk about this family situation here, why are the spouses even included into that list? Uh, well, it's to make sure that they get a full idea of the f total family income, because under Russian law it's actually illegal for... Uh, uh, state and federal official to engage in any commercial activity apart from, say, writing books or giving lectures. And, but what they can do to make sure they stay within the law is actually transfer their assets to their spouse, for example, and then when they finish their uh, federal employment, they can uh, reclaim those assets quite quickly and very easily. So it's to make sure they get a full picture of the total family income. Uh, but even if Elena Baturina's income was not included in this list, Yuri Lushkov's uh, salary last year of 8 million rubles, his income is actually more than uh, the total income, uh, s sorry, mayoral salaries of uh, London mayors and New York's mayors put together. Boris Johnson, the mayor of London last year, his salary was around uh, 140,000 pounds, which is just less than 7 million rubles. Whereas Michael Bloomberg, the mayor for New York, last year took just one dollar uh, for his troubles. He refuses uh, the official mayoral salary, takes just a dollar a year because he already is a multimillionaire. Fair enough. Um, another thing that grabbed my attention is that it's also been announced for the first time uh, the salaries of federal officials and that showed that it's more lucrative to, to work for the prime minister rather than for the president. Why is that? Well, according to experts, it's because Vladimir Putin is a better negotiator, tougher negotiator than uh, Dmitry Medvedev. This has come from Leo Jakobsen, the rector of the High School of Economics, who said that every year uh, the payroll of employees of each agency is heavily scrutinized when the budget is allocated. And the head of that agency must defend it uh, to make sure that his employees get a, get a good salary. And so obviously... What he's saying is that Vladimir Putin is a much tougher negotiator, and that's meant that his agency, his employees, actually have the highest federal salaries. On average, his employees, direct employees, get paid 88,500 rubles per month. Uh, the employees in Dmitry Medvedev's unit, uh, they earn just over 80,000 uh, rubles. Now, the lowest paid uh, federal uh, employees are actually, uh, they work at the Ministry of Agriculture. They earn just 37,000 rubles per month in comparison. So quite a big difference. But nevertheless, that 37,000 rubles, although they're the worst paid federal employees, uh, they actually earn almost double the average monthly wage compared with the rest of the country, which is just 20,000 rubles per month. 
Well, thank you very much for that uh, update. That's our correspondent, Ivor Bennett.